All right, so we're going to be talking about different trials for this first page that involve stopping at different times. We're going to be using our calculators to help us simulate things. Then we'll be talking about uh, games that we might play, probability games that we might play with money, and figuring out whether or not those games are going to be fair for us to play. So first one is an example of how we have to stop certain simulations at different times and how that could change uh, certain probabilities. So we have a couple that plans on having children until they have a girl or until they have a max of four children, whichever happens first. We will assume the likelihood of having a boy or a girl is 0.5. Describe a simulation. Well, the key is the stop. We have to either have a girl or until we have a max of four children. If you look down below, right here, you can see there are five possibilities. Your first child could be a girl. If throughout our simulations, our first child ends up being a girl simulated, we stop. Well, the other co possible situations are we have a boy first, which means we have to have another child, and then we have a girl. Stop. Third one, we have two boys. It means we have, a, have to have another child, then we have a girl. Stop. Another situation, we have three boys, which means we're going to have to have a fourth child no matter what. We're going to stop after that fourth child, but the fourth child could be a girl. The fourth child could be a boy. Okay, five total possibilities. The question we're asking is, you know, what's the probability that we have maybe uh, two kids? Maybe what's the probability that we have at least two kids? What is the probability that we will have a girl? What is the probability... Um, and we'll be able to calculate the theoretical probability of us just having a girl, okay? So simulation. Step one is always to assign. What should I assign using a random digits for boys and girls? What do we think, Mr. Hull? Probability of having a boy or a girl is 0.5. Is a what? Uh, boy. Okay. Which means 5 through 9 is a girl. Number two. This is how many numbers we're going to look at. Well, we don't look at a select amount of numbers. We will just say we will stop if we have a G or four children, which could be three boys and a girl, or just four boys. Number three, how many simulations do we want? Right down here, number three, run your simulation 20 times. Of course, 20 is decent. The more times that we run the simulation, the better our experimental probability will match the theoretical probability. All right. Um, could we use a coin or a die? Sure, right? A coin. We could have a uh, heads as a boy, tails as a girl. Die. What can we do for a die? Evens and odds. Evens is a boy, odds is a girl. Can we use a calculator? All right, let's get out our calculators. Let's talk about how we can use our calculators to produce random digits. And we talked about it last class. I'm just going to remind you about randint. Randint in your calculator. You go to your home screen. If you go to math, over to perb, stands for probability, you have your random number generator, randint. Now, randint, you will have three numbers that you'll have to put in to randint. This is your low integer, comma, your high integer, comma, the number of integers that you want. math, math. Okay. square
scroll to the right to PRB. Well, it's easy with our calculator. We don't have random digits from 0 to 9. We have random digits based on whatever we want. So, who can give me an example of an easier way using digits that you want that you can simulate having a boy or a girl? Beautiful. Thank you, Mr. Soames. We could have the random integers 1 or 2. One, comma, two. And you could say, uh, let's take 50 of them. And they will randomly select one or two. One is a boy, two is a girl. One is a head, two is a tail. One is an odd, two is an even, whatever. Okay? The problem is, I can't see all the numbers. So I need to actually take this list and store it somewhere else so that I can see it. Who remembers how to do that from last class? Store L1. Store L1. We will go down and we will make sure we press store, S-T-O, with that arrow. And then we will store it in one of our lists. Typically L1 works. If you just stick with L1, you'll be fine. So we say store. To access L1, we need to access the second L1, L1, enter. You go to stat, you go to edit, and voila. A boy, then a girl, then a boy, boy, girl, then a boy, then a girl, et cetera. Okay? Now, let's say the question was different. Let's say if you have 50 people randomly selected, what percentage of those people are boys and girls? Or do we want to count up how many ones we have and how many twos we have? Well, it's going to take me a while to count up the ones and twos if I have 50 of them, okay? And I have to scroll through all 50. Instead, what we will find is that we can sort these either from low to high or from high to low. So we need to familiarize ourselves with sort A and then typing in L1, or sort D, and typing in L1. If I go to stat, you will see sort A, sort D. I go to sort A, type in L1, and then what you will find is if you go back into your list, you will have all of your digits sorted from lowest to highest. And you can count up that I have a total of hopefully close to 25, right? 27 ones, which would leave 23 twos. Sort is under stat, stat. Sort A, sort A is sort ascending from lowest to highest. Sort D is sort descending, okay? And we'll use sort A and sort D um, in a little bit, okay? But for right now, we don't need it. But now we can see our calculator helps us. Ones and twos instead of zero through fours and five through nines makes it easy. So let's use the lines here, use, use the random digits, and let's simulate this situation of a family wanting to have a girl or four children. Here we go. Five through nine is a girl. We get six first. That's a girl. I'm going to circle the girls. So underneath the Possibility of one girl, tick mark for that. Next child, or next simulation, I just get a girl, boom. Next one, I'll have a boy and then a girl. CG. Next one, I'll have a boy and then a girl. BG. I got a four, then an eight. That's a boy, then a girl. BG. A one, then a seven, that's a boy, then a girl, BG. An eight, G. A seven, G. A one, then a seven, B, 
CPG. A 4, a 0, a 9, BBG. Okay, you guys keep going. I'll keep going. 5, G. 1, then 7, BG. 8, G. 4, then 5, BG. 3, 4, 0, 6, BBBG. 4, 8, BG. 9, G. I'm going to do this 20 times. I got 10, 15, 16, 17. I'm going to do it three more times. 8, G. 7, G. 2, 1, 0, 9, B, 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 G. 10, 17, 18, 19, 20. Okay, I'm done. I've done it 20 times. I haven't gotten four boys once. Does that mean we will never get four boys in a row? No, just haven't done enough simulations. There should be some probability here. But we've done the simulation 20 times. We'll just pause there. We'll be able to calculate the probabilities. So 20 times, if I have 9 out of 20, the probability, what's 9 divided by 20? 0.45. I say there's a 45% chance that I'm going to get a girl. 8 divided by 20 is the probability of having a boy then a girl. What do we get for that? 0.4. 1 out of 20, 0 0.05. 2 out of 20, 0.1. Add them together, we should get 1, and we do. All right, now we just have to answer the questions based on our simulation. What I would have probably liked to do, since I have more random digits, is kept going. But let's just stop here so that we can get to the next problem. What is the probability that the couple has exactly two children? We say there's a 0.4% chance or 40% chance that you're going to have exactly two children. What's the probability that we have at least two children? Is it 85? 55? 55. Two children, three children, four children, 0 0.4, 0 0.05, 0 0.1 is 0.55. What's the probability that we'll, there will be a girl amongst the children? Based on our simulation, we say there's probably going to be a girl 100% of the time. Is that going to be accurate? No. Because we're going to be able to find the theoretical probability that there will be a girl amongst our children. Who can tell me how to find the theoretical probability, this is just probability using our probability rules, that there will be a girl in amongst our children? It's a challenging problem. Anybody have any guesses? It's 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.
What's the probability of getting a boy for your first child? 50, okay. What's the probability of getting a boy on your second child? 50 as well. What should I do with those two probabilities? That's the probability of getting two boys in a row. Multiply. 0.5 times 0.5. Well, if I'm going to keep going to four boys times 0.5 times 0.5, I get that the probability of getting four boys in a row is 0 0.0625. There's a 6.25% chance that I'll get four boys in a row. What is the probability that we will have a girl in amongst the children if I know the probability of getting four boys is 6%? Exactly. Take one, subtract that from it. That will be the remaining possibilities, which all include a girl, which is 0.9375. Okay, so it turns out this, Probability right here should be closer to 0 0.0625, even though it's zero. We'd be able to figure out the probability of all the other ones. This should be 0 0.5. This should be 0 0.5 times 0 0.5. This should be 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. This should be 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5 as well. So you kind of just can add all those up, and you will get one as well. These are all the theoretical probabilities. 0.5 plus 0.25 plus 0.125 plus 0.0625 each one. You add those up, you should get one. And we do, okay? So notice our first one close to the actual, second one off, third off, fourth higher than, and et cetera, okay? Good, but that's the idea. If we continue to do more and more trials, these theoretical probabilities, I mean, these experimental probabilities will match the theoretical. Okay, next problem. This is going to be a fun one. I enjoy this one. Turkey Airline planes have 40 seats. 90% of ticket purchasers show up for their flight. President Herkey decides to sell 43 tickets for each flight, hoping that there is enough passengers who don't show up that he can still put the passengers on the plane and take off, okay? Because he knows that 10% of passengers won't show up. The question is, what is the probability of an oversold situation? What is the probability that out of the 43 tickets sold, two, one, or zero people don't show up? So that means 41 people show up, 42 people show up, 43 people show up. If 41, 42, or 43 people show up, the flight can't take off because you are overbooked. Let's design a simulation on the calculator and estimate this probability. I want you guys to kind of brainstorm and think about what you can write or plug into your calculator to design Mr. Herkey selling 43 tickets and 90% of those people possibly showing up, 10% not showing up. So, what would you plug into your calculator to do that trial of selling 43 tickets? How can you simulate it with 90% of people showing up, 10% possibly not showing up. Talk about it amongst your neighbors. See what they have ideas for. I have not gotten one person to correctly do the entire thing from the other class. The other class is a very small class, though. I believe you guys can do it. I just want to do one flight. One situation where President Herkey 
sells 43 tickets, I want to see how many people showed up for that flight. How can I do that? I like that idea, but it's going to be a little too complicated from 0 to 99, but it'll work. I got one person who's got the right idea. Anybody else? I'm looking at everybody's. All right. Miss May, what did you put down for yours? Zero, zero through 99 and? 43. Okay, so why did you say zero, zero to 99? What do you use these numbers for? Like, so I'm going to get 43 numbers between zero, zero and 99. What do I look at when I see those 43 numbers between zero, zero and 99? Not sure? Well, you got it right. That's fine. I would probably say just from 0 to 9. Why would I want 43 numbers from 0 to 9? Can anybody explain? It's like each ticket will get a number, 43 tickets sold. Each ticket will be represented by a number from 0 to 9. Well, how can I simulate 90% of the people showing up? Mr. Riley? Nope. Nope. I'm just saying, how can I simulate selling 43 tickets and 90% of those tickets showing up? This is correct, but why am I using 0 to 9? What am I looking for? Attendance. attendance. How can I designate attendance? Zero, three, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. If I do this, I can say, hey, if I see a 0 through 8, that means that person showed up. If I see a 9 or a 10, that will be a no-show. Sorry, 0 through uh, 8 and just 9 will be a no-show. Okay, 43 tickets, each of them are either going to show up or not show up. Okay? Well, let's do it. We are all representing a flight, each one of us. We all need to see if our flight can take off or if we're overbooked. Let's start by all generating 43 digits between 0 and 9. Go. Math. Curb. Ran in. 0 through 9. 43 of them. What do I do with those digits so I can see them? Put them in L1. Stat. Edit. Now, what do I need to count up to see if my flight can take off? Nine. Just the nines, the people who don't show up. And what do I need to make sure we have enough nines of? I just answer it. 
I got to make sure I have enough nines to take off. I need at least three nines. If I have three nines or more, I can take off. Now, it's going to be time consuming to go through all of my numbers. What is a quicker way to possibly change this so that I can see quickly how many nines I have? Yeah, sort D. Let's go back to stat. Let's go in and sort D my flight. Now I have a list of tickets. If you have a nine, you did not show. For my flight, flight one, I have one, two, three, four, five no-shows. That means my flight is taking off. How many no-shows did you get, Miss Rios? Four, you're taking off, Miss Simpson. Mr. Stones. Four, you're going to take off, Mr. Visser. Eight, no-shows, you're taking off, Miss Weldon. Four, you're good, Miss White. Five, you're good. Still doing it. Come on. At get random integers, stats, sorry, math, perb, random integers between 0 and 9, 43 of them. Plug it into L1, sort of descending. Ms. Pushman, how many nines do you have? Eight, you're taking off. Ms. Nevergitch. So you're doing sort A. You want to go to sort O. But you just have one. Oh, because you probably didn't store this list in L1 yet. Now sort D. Here. Go back. Let's delete that. Now we'll be able to stat sort D. L1. Miss Nevergitch has one nine. Her flight is not taking off. Ms. Schmeyer? Four. Four, you're good. Miss May? Good. You're good. Seven. Good. Four. Good. Three. Good. Five. Good. Four. Good. Eight. Good. Three. Not taking off. Six. Good. Four. Good. Three. Good. Three. Good. So only two. Out of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 30, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, two out of the 23 flights are not taking off. If I want to make sure that my uh, flights are full, Would overselling my flights be a reasonable risk? If only two out of 23 are going to be overbooked, maybe it's a reasonable risk to make sure that I have 40 total people showing up. Let's do it again. Everybody do it again. Let's see if we have more than two out of the 23 of us, just to kind of increase our simulation run. I'll go back. I'll rerun. My perb between 0 and 9, 43 of them. Store in L1. Sort descending. L1. That edit. Oh my goodness, I'm totally taking off. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight no shows. Okay, everybody do it again. Whose flight isn't taking off? Raise your hand. Oh, three of us, four of us, four of us. Okay, all of a sudden it's six out of 46. Okay, which is going to be close to like close to a 12 
uh, you know, 12 to 15 percent chance. Okay, uh, that's really cool. It's really interesting. So that's the probability of being overbooked. <coughs> we kept going, more trials, better probability to match that theoretical, that experimental probability with the theoretical probability. Okay, let's go to the back. Fair games. Now we are going to assign monetary values for successes and failures to produce games of chance. Games you would see at casinos or games that your buddy might dare you to play. Here's the thing. What we'll, we're going to do is we're going to simulate the game. We'll simulate the game a bunch. If we simulate the game a bunch and find the average amount that we could win for each time we simulate the game, if the average amount is zero, that means this is a fair game. That means probably I'm going to win as a player half of the time, and you are going to win as a casino half the time. And it's not that. It's not half winning half the time and losing half the time. It's my average winnings end up being zero. That means on average, I'm not going to make any money or lose any money. If after I do the simulation a bunch of times, I end up with a positive value for my average winnings, well then that game is favoring the player and I want to keep playing that game as much as possible. If I average all of my winnings and I get a negative value, well that means probably the game is favoring the house or the person who's proposing the game. That means I don't want to play that because on average the house will always win. Which is why Vegas exists these days. Because all the games that you can play in Vegas, on average, favor the house, just by a little bit. That means, on average, if people play enough, the house will always win. Which is why in roulette, there's not 25 black numbers and 25 red numbers, and there's just 50 total numbers. It's 25 red, 25 black, one green zero, and one extra double green zero. So that the probability of it landing on a red is not one, one half. And the probability landing on a black is not one half. It's actually less than one half. So that's how the house wins. Okay, so that's what it means by a fair game. If you're questioning whether something is fair, simulate the game. And average your winning. or losses. Average your results. If your average is greater than zero, we're going to be favoring the player. If your average is less than zero, you're going to favor the house. The game favors the house. If the average equals zero, we'll call it fair. Okay? All right. Is this going to be a fair game? I have five cards, each with a different symbol. They're shuffled, and we choose one. If we choose a diamond, we win $5. The cards are then reshuffled after each draw. You must pay $1 for each selection. You continue to play until you select the diamond, and then you stop. Is this going to be a fair game? Okay. How are we going to simulate this game? Step one is always to assign my numbers in my random digit table. Ideas on how I can simulate drawing these five cards using a random digit table. Yeah, but what about the numbers five, six, seven, eight, nine? What do you do with those? If I had my calculator, good call. 
I could go ran int between 0 and 5. 0 through 8. So it's like this is a 0, 1. This is like 2, 3. This is 4, 5. This is 6, 7. If I get an 8 or a 9, I win. If I get something which is a 0 through... What happened here? Uh-oh. Freaking out here. If I get 0 through 7, we'll consider that a loss. If I get an 8 or a 9, that's a win. Each time I draw a card, however, that is going to be minus a dollar. Okay? So step two is when I'm going to stop, or the number of numbers, I'm going to stop when I get an 8 or a 9. And the number of trials, we want to do 20 times. I'm going to keep track of my winnings over here. So, starting on line 40, I have 1, 2, 9. That means that's a loss, a loss, then a win. Well, I spent $1, $2, $3 to draw those three cards. So that's minus $3, but I won $5 for selecting the diamond. So that's minus 3 plus 5. I end up netting $2. Okay? Let's keep going. Minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, minus 5, minus 6, minus 7, plus 5. I lost $2. You guys do the next, uh, go, go to 5, and let's see if our answers are the same. And count the winnings over here on the side. We're probably only going to do 10 because we don't have time to do 20, but let's see. One, two, three, four, five dollars lost, five dollars won. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Eleven dollars lost, five dollars lost. Let's just finish this off. Thank you. Five. Two dollars lost, one at five dollars one. Six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Twelve dollars lost, five dollars one. Seven. Number seven, five dollars won, one dollar lost, plus four, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven dollars lost, five dollars won, minus two, nine, one, two, three, four, minus five, plus five, ten, one, two, three dollars lost, one dollar won. Uh, five dollars won. Okay, let's just stop after ten. What we can do is add up all of these and average them to see my average winnings. Well, two minus two plus zero plus negative six plus three minus seven plus four plus negative two plus zero plus two is negative 6 divided by 10. How much do I want, win or lose? On average, it appears that I've lost 60 cents each time that I've played. Based on my simulations, would we consider this a fair game, favorable to the player, or favorable to the house? Favorable to the house.
Well, turns out this is actually a fair game. We will talk about expected value next class, and we can talk about our expected winnings. There is a 20% chance that I will win $4, and there's an 80% chance that I will lose $1 if I add up the expected winnings and the expected losses and their probabilities I will find that this is just going to be equal to zero, which means this is a fair game. How would I have seen that this is a fair game using my simulations? What did I need to do? What do I need to do to have this number get closer to the theoretical winnings? Keep going. More and more trials. The more and more trials that I would do as I continue to average my winnings, I would find my average would end up being essentially zero. Okay? The next example is very similar. Um, so we won't do it. Instead, let's start working on our homework, which is this worksheet, and there are two text problems. That is, the point two is the probability that I get a winning card. I get a one out of five chance of getting a winning card. And when I get that winning card, I pay the dollar, but I get five dollars, so I win four dollars. And then the other ones, I have an 80% chance, which is the four out of five, that I lose a dollar. And this is what we'll talk about next class. You don't have to know that for this class, okay? I don't know. I'm for because I didn't, like, accept the request. Like, I, I, I'm really not, I don't really Well, then accept the request. What's up? Uh, let me make sure that you will be allowed to go to the library.